AP Biology, Chapter 38, Part 2. Here we have the germinated pollen grain. Remember, this has the male gametophyte. And the reason why it's in blue is because it's haploid. It has only one set of chromosomes. Once the pollen grain lands on the um, stigma, which is kind of like a landing pad, it'll divide into, um, the cell inside will divide into two sperm nuclei and travel down the style all the way down to the ovule where the egg is inside. The um, embryo sac within the ovule here, which is inside the ovary, don't get those confused, ovary, ovule inside. The ovule has the eggs. The egg is also going to be haploid, produced by the female gametophyte. Haploid to haploid, remember that's mitosis for producing egg and sperm. Let's go ahead and write this down for the male parts of the flower. Pause at this time. And let's write this down for the female parts of the, of the flower. Here we have the anther and filament that makes up the stamen. The pollen on the tip there, being made by the uh, anther, is the male gametophyte. Here we have the style, the long neck, the stigma, landing pad, and at the base here we have the ovary. Inside the ovary we have one or more ovules which have eggs inside that will become seeds. Here we have another angiosperm. As you can see, here we have the stigma, landing pad for pollen. Style, it's a neck of the uh, female part of the carpal. And then in the center we have the ovary. Inside the ovary, one or more ovules. Ovules have the seeds. Here we have the anther and filament anther producing the pollen which has the male gametophyte that you can see here. Not all, not all plants can self-fertilize and we're going to talk about that coming up. Alright, we're going to need to write this down, fertilization and pollination. Pollen released from the anthers is carried by wind or animals to land on the stigma. And the pollen grains produce something called a pollen tube. So the style is fairly solid but uh, enzymes will pretty much drill a hole through that uh, style uh, all the way down to the ovary. And then the two sperm that come from the pollen uh, enter an embryo sac. One of the sperm is going to fertilize the egg, become a zygote, just like us. However, there's another sperm, and there plants have something called double fertilization that we're going to talk about next. The zygote develops into an embryo, and within uh, seeded plants, like gymnosperms and angiosperms, the ovule develops into a seed. Make sure you know that. Ovule is inside the ovary. Ovule has an egg, fertilized, becomes a zygote and the ovule itself becomes a seed with the, ov uh, the zygote inside. Now the ovary develops into a fruit. So in angiosperms, not gymnosperms, the uh, ovary that covers the ovule turns into a fruit, which contains one or more seeds. All right, preventing self-pollination. Remember, genetic diversity is a good thing in living things, and that includes plants too. And if you self-fertilize, you don't have as much genetic diversity, not as much chances to produce a a trait that will promote a uh, survival or reproductive advantage in, um, in that individual. One way we uh, prevent self-pollination is just the uh, stamen and carpal developing at different uh, times. So if your eggs are mature but your sperm are not, then you can't self-fertilize. So that's one thing. Let's go and write that one down. We also have another one where we have um, the pollinator, the animal pollinator, don't doesn't touch the, um, the anthers and maybe just touch the um, the uh, carpal, and uh, that prevents the pollen from getting on the animal pollinator. There's also a biochemical self incompatibility that's a little bit more complicated. There are chemical barriers preventing the um, uh, the pollen, the sperm, of uh, one plant from fertilizing the same plant. All right, double fertilization. Let's make sure you have this down. This is pretty important for chapter 38. Double fertilization means that we have two sperm coming from the pollen. Uh, remember, the gametophyte makes the gametes, and they're going to make two gametes, two sperm. One sperm fertilizes the egg, forms a diploid zygote, nothing exciting about that. The other sperm, however, fuses with two polar nuclei to form a triploid, three-end endosperm, endosperm. This endosperm is food tissue in the, in the seed. This is like coconut milk. It's the, the starchy stuff inside corn. It's the stuff inside beans. All that is endosperm. So if you have a seed, the zygote is going to be microscopic, but most of that seed will be endosperm. And guess who else can make use of things like starch and grains and 
coconut milk that has uh, sugars and starches. It's us animals. So when we, uh, you know, have bean dip and things like that and tortilla chips, we're just basically grinding up the seeds that have endosperm and using it for our own cell respiration. However, the plants are using this um, endosperm for the zygote. That's the uh, reason why it exists. All right, so let's t uh, review this. We have pollen lands on the stigma, becomes two sperm without tails. The sperm without tails, two of them, make a, um, a tube down the style, a pollen tube, and then eventually the two sperm end up at the middle here in the ovule, inside the ovary. In the ovule, we have an egg. And then the one sperm fertilizes one of the eggs, so that becomes a zygote. And then the other sperm fertilizes the two polar nuclei. And we're going to want to label that. Let's go ahead and write that in. Polar nuclei, two of them, fertilized by another sperm to form a triploid endosperm. Double fertilization in plants. Make sure you understand it. Go through it a couple times. All right, so now that we have our zygote, the zygote's going to start to develop. This is called uh, germination. And uh, we can either form two cotyledons or one cotyledon. And if you remember, cotyledons become seed leaves uh, in the developing plant. If it has two cotyledons, it's a dicot. One cotyledon, like um, corn and grasses, it's a monocot. Uh, let's copy this down. So we have a plant embryo. Let's talk about what this uh, seed is made of. This is a seed. Let's go and label that, too. We have the starchy endosperm. And you might want to add to that 3N. We have two cotyledons. This can be some kind of dicot. We got the embryo inside that's kind of developing into the plant. We have the ovary wall that will become the fruit. You can write that in. And then underneath the ovary wall that becomes a fruit is the seed coat. Don't get fruit confused with endosperm. Endosperm is nutritious inside the seed. The ovary that becomes a fruit is nutritious outside the seed. The endosperm is used by the seed or by the embryo to develop. It's using the energy. And as you can uh, guess, the embryo, as it gets bigger, the endosperm gets smaller as it gets used up. The ovary, however, uh, that turns into a fruit is going to be used to spread the seeds, and it's not going to be used directly by the embryo itself. All right, so let's write this down. A fruit is a mature ovary. So in the center there, we got our ovary that becomes a uh, fruit, and this is the fruit surrounding the seeds. There's no such thing as a vegetable in science. The walls of the ovary thicken and form a fruit, and that protects the dormant seeds and it helps in their dispersal. So here we have a uh, peach with one flower, one carpal, one ovary, and one seed. Big old seed, less clear and kind of there. Here we have a uh, five carpal flower, and if it has five carpals, many ovaries, many seeds. And that's why there's lots of seeds in apples. Citrus fruits will have one flower, many carpels, many ovaries with many ovules inside. Remember, ovaries surround the ovules. Ovules become the seed. Ovary becomes the fruit. And um, things like oranges are like that. Raspberries, one flower, many ovaries, many seeds. More variations in division angiosperm. All right. Now, you already have this in your uh, notes, but uh, if you go, let's go and review this. So the sporified plant produces unique reproductive structures. The male gametophyte is the pollen grain. And if you don't have that down somewhere, make sure you have that down. That's kind of important. The female gametophyte is inside the embryo sac within the ovaries, within the ovule of the flower. So ovaries, inside of that are ovules. Inside of that is an embryo sac. Pollination by wind or animals brings the pollen grain to the female gametophyte. You know, the pollen's sticky and uh, sticks to animals like bees and birds. And it's lightweight, spread by wind. Fertilization takes place within the ovary, so we have that double fertilization, one sperm fertilizing an egg, becoming a zygote, the other sperm fertilizing two polar nuclei to become a triploid endosperm. Don't get the polar nuclei confused with polar bodies. Polar bodies are the three cells produced by females that, um, after meiosis, during uh, gamete production, that don't become an egg. One egg, three polar bodies. That's not the same thing as the polar nuclei, which is in plants. And then the seed contains the sporophyte embryo, the di diploid uh, embryo that came from the zygote. So review, and if you don't think you'll remember it, write it down.
coevolution plants and animals, uh, selection for animals that recognize bright colors on flowers, selection for flowers that produce more nectar, so animals are, um, are drawn to the flowers to spread the pollen. They both are adapting together, and this is an example of mutualism. Seed dispersal, plants produce enormous number of uh, seeds. They're typically our strategists, many of them are. Uh, so there's a lot of genetic variation. So if it's a lightweight seed, you can imagine it's probably spread by wind. Uh, if it's a low density seed that floats like a coconut, it spreads by water. If it's a delicious uh, fruit surrounding the seed, then it's probably spread by animals that eat it and deposit it in a nitrogen rich pile of fertilizer. All right, this ends uh, chapter 38, notes on uh, plant reproduction. We'll be reviewing this in class as well.